Hey, how's it going? We are in the Gospel of John, chapter 7. We'll be looking at verses 14 through 24. Not until halfway through the feast did Jesus go up to the temple courts and begin to teach. The Jews were amazed and asked, How did this man get such learning without having studied? Jesus answered, My teaching is not my own. It comes from him who sent me. If anyone chooses to do God's will, he will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. Well, that's important. He who speaks on his own does so to gain honor for himself, but he who works for the honor of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. Has not Moses given you the law? Yet not one of you keeps the law. Why are you trying to kill me? You are demon-possessed, the crowd answered. Who is trying to kill you? Jesus said to them, I did one miracle, and you are all astonished. Yet because Moses gave you circumcision, though actually it did not come from Moses but from the patriarchs, you circumcise a child on the Sabbath. Now if a child can be circumcised on the Sabbath so that the law of Moses may not be broken, why are you angry with me for healing the whole man on the Sabbath? Stop judging by mere appearances and make a right judgment. And we'll jump in with verse 25 as well. At that point, some of the people of Jerusalem began to ask, Isn't this the man they're trying to kill? <laughs> so, yeah, they're trying to kill him. So, Jesus does go to the, uh, to the Feast of Tabernacles and begin to teach. And this is, uh, you know, they don't really know who he is at the time. They'll figure that out. As time goes on here, as we kind of alluded to there in verse 25. So apparently this is like a, a big public area where people would speak, you know, quietly to each other. Or they would stand up and speak for everyone to hear. And it's places where people would go and teach and other people would listen and... You could draw a crowd and that sort of a thing. So here he begins to stand up and teach and people are listening to him. And it doesn't really say what he was talking about at the beginning, just that they were very impressed. You know, how did this man get such learning without having studied? So remember, Jesus was the son of Joseph, uh, you know, in the flesh or whatever. Like, you know, his dad was Joseph, obviously, uh, he was born of the Spirit, uh, the virgin birth with Mary and all that stuff, but uh, he's raised in the, the, as the son of a carpenter, and he becomes a carpenter, and so he's not a religious elite that's been in school all this time and learning all these different things. So that's what they say, like, wow, this guy's really got some amazing things to say, and he hasn't even studied. And that's where Jesus says this teaching it's not his own, it comes from the Father. And then verse 17, which jumped out as I was reading it. If anyone chooses to do God's will, he will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. Look at that. If anyone chooses to do God's will, that's powerful. You can choose to do God's will or not. But if you do make that choice to do the will of God, to follow the basic teachings of the Scripture, for example, then... He will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. If you want to find out if these teachings are good or if they're just a bunch of baloney, follow them and see what happens. Follow the Ten Commandments. See how it goes. Read through the, the Scriptures, the New Testament, especially the teachings of Jesus, the teachings in the New Testament, uh, and follow them and see what happens. That is what made the biggest difference for me, is actually doing it. Um, your life changes then. So, then, anyway, people were impressed. They didn't realize who Jesus was, but they finally figured it out. Then, Jesus does confront a religious uh, distortion of the goodness of God. So, the idea of a Sabbath is really important. People need a break. People need to rest. You need some mental rest. You need some uh, physical rest. You need time to reconnect with God through the busyness of life. So Sabbath is very important. And yet they 
they were getting nitpicky about it and making the Sabbath a religious hassle that didn't really draw people closer to God. It just was a, a big hassle, a big problem. And so it was a big issue. So Jesus is coming against their Sabbath uh, practices. And, you know, he just rails on them for that. And then that's where they start to, you know, react against him. But uh, I just love verse 24. Stop judging by mere appearances and make a right judgment. So it can be easy for... For Christians and, you know, religious people to get caught up in the details of their religious practice and then miss God. <laughs> that happens all the time. It actually is fairly easy to slip into uh, when you are just habitually doing things. You know, you can be doing something good, but it just turns into just doing it over and over and, and it loses its meaning or, you know... You just have some specific way of doing things. Somebody does it a different way, and then you react against them like they're going against a powerful truth of God when it's just your own little thing, uh, you know. So, I don't know. What I want us to do is to be able to see through the appearances and be able to make a right judgment. Uh, so many crazy things going on in today's world with misinterpretation uh, misinformation, you know, people politicizing, <clears throat> you know, Jesus and, and things like that. And it's just, it, let's see through and make a right judgment. All right, let's pray that we could not get caught up in religious foolishness, but really see the purity and the good things of God. If we can see that and we can live in that rather than in a culture that even a religious culture, a Christian culture that can miss the things of God for their desires or their ways. Let's see through that and grab hold of the pure good things of God. So let's pray along those lines. Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness, for your grace and your mercy, and that you are good. Lord, help us to see. Help us to see past all the things of this world that are confusing and that draw us into an emotional reaction that isn't what you would have for us, that draw us into misunderstandings and all of that stuff. But Lord, help us to see through all of that to your purity, to your truth, to your heart, to your goodness, and connect with that personally and then be able to live our lives in the midst of that truth. So, Lord, bless us in this way. Help us to truly abide in the vine and not blown here and there by every wind of teaching. Lord, let us connect with you and be grounded in the truth and in your pure gospel, your good news. Lord, let it be. In Jesus' name, amen.